I'm told I have 10 more minutes. And let me quickly talk about, you know, um, the area of uh, security. Of course, we have by law our neighborhood watch state to have the most beautiful schools and best equipped schools that other people from other nations will want to send their children to the schools. These are the, so what we, we, we've, just, we've just not started. We are just building life foundation. And you know, when the reprogram you know, starts, just like you go to the mall we built, you will not see the massive foundation with it. And so take it that this is likened to the massive foundation of our mall. And so the superstructure is coming up. And so our second tenor is not going to be a sleeping second tenor. It's going to build on this foundation that we have made. And uh, anybody coming on that tries to come on board um, after me, uh, not uh, these uh, uh, jobbers that are just uh, moving up and down. Some are setting a campaign, uh, you know, begging funds, you know, in social medias. Many of them know what they are looking for. But if it is my job they are looking for, when they go down there, boy, they have to ask themselves if they are really qualified to take up this job, you know. And if they go around, and if they go around and they can define a bony state vis-a-vis -vis how we made it, uh, we'll be very happy and know that, you know. But some of these people have worked with me, and some of them that call themselves certain uh, professional names. But myself, we just come on uh, first degree in engineering, was correcting their memos. You know, I was the teacher correcting their memos. And so, so I, I just, uh, you know, wonder. So the second distance is going to be under. God prepared us very well. You know, I read, you know, uh, civil engineering, you know, and um, uh, I also, everything mathematics from my childhood was never anything outside 100%. And uh, that is also disadvantageous to my uh, uh, commissioners, because when people come, I just calculate immediately, I'll tell you how much it's supposed to be. And so, it's going to be a very, very uh, dutiful second tenor, and I thank you for that question. Thank you, Your Excellency, for that. We now invite Honor Hamuke of the Sun Newspapers to ask his question. After that, we go to our colleagues at the floor. Thank you. His Excellency, I actually have two questions to ask. We have seen the beautification of Abakiliki, the roundabout, the fountains and all that. They are beautiful. And personally, I like the touch of bricks and all that. But we know that in Nigeria, the problem is always maintenance culture. So what have you put in place to ensure that during your tenure and after that, that these roundabout, road, and others will maintain the same standard. That's question number one. Then number two is, Nigeria at 58 is still largely divided along ethnic and religious lines. And these are always manifested during election. What would you suggest? for Nigeria to overcome these challenges. Thank you. Thank you very much, Onoa. Well, the, the, in engineering, there is what is called, when you're designing hydraulic structure, there's what is called self-cleansing velocity. And so in the building of our infrastructure, we can say that we are deploying what we call self-cleansing velocity. You know, what it means is that we build structures that will require minimum maintenance. That's number one. And number two is that if we maintain this infrastructure for the past three years, uh, and we're going to maintain it for another five years, the person that will succeed me will be the person ordained by God. And so the, 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 the upon people will rise. I love what Ambassador Nguruku said. He said, by the time I leave, if one street light goes off, one bulb, that they will come and chase the person, you know. So we've gotten to an irreversible point that the, the infrastructure we're putting in place, the priority number one of the successful government will be to maintain them. So people will not agree. On the second question, 
We are very concerned about the level of division we have in Nigeria, along ethnic, along political, along religious line. It is very simple what we should do, we leaders. You know, my Bible tells me that he that has rule over people must rule with the fear of God. If we believe as leaders that it's God that crowned a man, and that it's God that brings up a man, and you lead, because by the fear of God, men depart from evil. Some of these things are man-made. The common man is not interested. The common man wants, you know, two or three square meal on his table. But when you want to vie for position, you can whip up sentiments. You know, either religious or ethnic, you know, or clannish kind of uh, sentiment. So, my advice is that let's begin to see ourselves as one people. In this state, I send Christians on pilgrimage. I send Muslims on Hajj. Muslims are in my administration. Christians are in my administration. Let's begin to see ourselves as one, you know, people. And I don't believe that Christians will believe that they are religion is superior to that of the Muslim, nor Muslim believe that is superior to that of Christian. It is the Lord that judges it. So if we are all serving the same God, which we all call God, then the judgment should be left to God. So I believe that if we begin to see ourselves with love, if we begin to be equitable in sharing of resources, in sharing of positions in this country, we will begin to address this. Because if we go through this, for a few more years, it will be very difficult for our children, you know, not to throw the same line. But when we go outside this country, we see ourselves as one. Why shall we not see ourselves as one, you know, if we are here? And there's something I used to tell our people. I said the person that has helped you the most is probably not your father, is probably not your brother, is not probably somebody from your place. It's God that arranges destiny helpers. So I will suggest strongly that we begin to see ourselves with the eyes of love. We begin to fear God in our dealings with one another. We begin to be equitable in sharing of resources and positions. And we begin to know there is no victor, there is no one who is inferior, there is no one who is superior. We are Nigerians. Thank you. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. I want to, at this point, appeal to my colleagues at the floor to please allow those of us at this stage to take two questions from here before we come down to you. Sir Excellency, my name is Sayadilo Joan Wright for New Telegram. Well, I have listened to you and with humility and uh, I will say that you have done well. Thank you, sir. I, I also want to find out, sir, you spoke about the revenue profile, about uh, generation about the state. At the federal uh, allocation, the state is that the lower rank, the IGR, you are more considerate in not taxing your people. And you spoke about so many projects your administration has done. How did you fund those projects? That is one. Two, you. Talk about opposition. You have been playing a robust uh, opposition. Uh, you are in a PDP, and uh, at the federal level, we have a, an APC government. But you have not been seen as uh, being uh, attacking the federal government. But at home front, you have been uh, a subject of your kind of uh, battle. From your, is it uh, what is is it because of power that's at stake, or what the problems are? The third aspect has to do with uh, Ebo is 22, and uh, you have been in office for more than three years. There were promises you made to the people of Ebo. You have fulfilled some of the promises. There are still some challenges. What are some of the outstanding? issues, challenges that you have not been able to address. Thank you, sir. 